I really need to thank you and Sarah for being there for me. You guys could have easily said, this isn't my problem. This is your problem. Your lack of due diligence is entirely your fault and not done anything at all. But you guys have been there for me every step of the way. You responded on Voxer at 342 in the morning. I know it might have been 642, depending on where you were. But honestly, who works at that time? So just the fact that you guys were there for me, I appreciate it so much. Welcome to the Creating Wealth Show with Jason Hartman. You're about to learn a new slant on investing, some exciting techniques and fresh new approaches to the world's most historically proven asset class that will enable you to create more wealth and freedom than you ever thought possible. Jason is a genuine self-made multimillionaire who's actually been there and done it. He's a successful investor, lender, developer, and entrepreneur who's owned properties in 11 states, had hundreds of tenants and been involved in thousands of real estate transactions. This program will help you follow in Jason's footsteps on the road to your financial independence day. You really can do it. And now, here's your host, Jason Hartman, with the complete solution for real estate investors. Welcome listeners from around the world. This is episode 1214, 1214, and thank you for joining me today as we take a look at the last nine or 10 years of interest rate history, and we talk about some world events and maybe how rates go up and down, why they go up and down. And we've got our in-house economist, Thomas Young, here with us to dive into this fascinating topic. Thomas, welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Good to have you. So uh, I have to make a confession that I have made many times. You know, some people just can't admit when they're wrong. But I like to think that I can admit when I'm wrong. And I have been terribly wrong about predicting interest rates. I mean, I've been good at a lot of other predictions. Very good, actually. Pat on the back. Noted. But interest rates, wow. <laughs> Don't go with anything I say when it comes to interest rates. because <laughs> My prediction skills have been pretty miserable on the interest rate side. Our interest rates, I mean, I think they're very hard to predict because they don't really go with the market. When you're looking at mortgage rates, first off, the Fed doesn't directly control mortgage rates, but they indirectly control them, obviously. And then, you know, they're not really uh, based on free market forces. If they were, it seems like you could predict them. And of course, the maybe one of the more reputable sources for interest rate is Grant's Interest Rate Observer, uh, sort of a high-end wonky newsletter uh, that he puts out. Uh, what, do, what do you think about interest rates in this whole game of, of rates? Yeah, when you said interest rates can't be predicted, that, that takes me back to the 70s when economists had built these models and they went out to businesses and said, hey, we can predict where interest rates are going. Hire us to do your modeling and to do your predictions. And one reason that was probably very important in the 70s is that at least during the latter part of the 70s, we saw very high interest rates. I mean, exorbitantly high interest rates that went into the first year or two of the 80s, right? Yeah, I think so. And the economists, they came in and tried to predict interest rates. And as as you already know, they can't. Right? Yeah. It's, it's somewhat, I don't know, I mean, they're not completely unpredictable, but it's driven by forces that sometimes you just can't tell what's going on. Right. Yeah, it really is. It's a fool's game to try and predict rates with any degree of accuracy, but we certainly can review interest rates. And by the way, when you mentioned the 70s, I was going to say, when you said, I remember it takes me back to the 70s, and I was going to interrupt you and say, when they had such great music. <laughs> you know, I mean, I tell you, folks, I'm a really corny person, but I love some of that old 70s music. I mean, it was just, uh, well, it was before our massive cultural decay. The music is romantic and it's sweet and it's just human. And <laughs> it's just really nice. I, I like the 70s music. I mean, every decade has its share of good and bad music, of course. But uh, man, 70s. I think my first romantic feelings were developed back then. Yeah, that music was good. <laughs> you know, they say you always like the music. And tell me if you think this is true. You always like the music 
that was popular or that you liked when you became an adult, when you came of age. Now, that was a little before I came of age, but, you know, they still played the older music on, right? But, uh, yeah, what do you think of that? Oh, hearing you talk about the 70s, it makes me wish I had had a video of watching you dance to Rod Stewart. That was awesome. Oh, you mean at Meet the Masters? <laughs> that was, <laughs> yeah. That was fun, though. Well, well Rod, the Rod Stewart peak was in the 80s, right? I mean, I remember that being yeah. in the 80s, but I don't know. Maybe it was. I don't know. Maybe it was. Oh, I, th I think you're right. Too. I'm sure yeah. you're right. Yeah. That was good. Now we've, you know, I always wanted to get into the, the world of producing musical events, and now I've done two of them with tribute bands we, we you know of course uh meet the masters the first year we had our journey tribute band and then last year we had our rod stewart tribute band just a, a few months ago and we're gonna have more folks because music is uh is good and everybody's having fun you know when you see the video of that unfortunately the cameraman did not pan to the rest of the room so you just sort of see the stage and like right in front of the stage and you know there were a lot of people dancing all around the room <laughs> that yeah. you did not see in that uh, in that <laughs> shot but i'm a big music fan i uh, i think music really is the universal language it's pretty awesome but hey Aren't we talking about interest rates or uh, maybe we can make music here with interest rates? <laughs> what do you think? Oh, I was once asked to give a solo, to sing in church a solo. And after the first uh, part of it, I was asked not to sing anymore. <laughs> Sounds so, like me. You know, don't want... Yeah. Yeah. I was in my church choir in the 90s and uh, I loved it, but I just do not have talent. <laughs> so I'll stick with the spoken word. Everybody says I'm good at that. But yeah, I don't think singing, probably not. So I feel your pain there, Thomas. Definitely do. Okay, so hey, let's not go back as far as the 70s or the 80s or even the 90s or the early 2000s. Let's just go back to 2010. And what was going on in 2010? And uh, tell us about interest rates back then. Yeah, so what I did is I, I was wondering... You know, over the past 50 years, when were the top 10 years for interest rates? Mm -hmm. And the reason being is I thought, well, individuals say that interest rates are low right now, but is that actually the case compared to what, you know, what was going on? Mm -hmm. So I I came up with a top 10 list and number 10 was 2010. Yeah. Okay. So tw in 2010, it looks like mortgage rates were about 4.69%. So quite low. And there were some world events going on. And, and then you charted the median price here on your document. Tell us more about that. Yeah. So in 2010, 4.69%, a new, the median home price of a new home was 223,000 of a new Property, I should mm -hmm. say property, yeah. not not new home. Two hundred twenty-three thousand. What was happening in twenty ten? Well, we had the Haiti earthquake, we had the BP oil spill. Uh, the U.S. started withdrawing from Iraq. Um, you know, there were tensions between North and South Korea. In twenty ten, we first heard of WikiLeaks. We saw the Canada Winter Olympics. Uh, it's been nine years. I can't believe it's been nine years, but Obamacare was passed in twenty ten and. Wow. That, that I can't believe it's been that long either. That seems like it was yesterday that Obama and Nancy Pelosi were grinning at, what, 2 a.m. on Sunday morning or, well, Monday morning technically. But yeah, when they got it passed, I, what a disaster that was. But uh, a lot of disasters, really. And, and remember what 2010 was like. I want you all to think back to 2010 as we were, you know, arguably coming out of the Great Recession. But but there was still a lot of fear. There were a lot of uh, depressed minds back then and a lot of people who were scared. Uh, nobody knew if we were really coming out of it, if uh, things would lapse again and there'd be another crash. Um, and there will always be more crashes, folks. That's just the nature of the beast, obviously. But it was a scary time back then, wasn't it? Yeah. Unemployment, for example, in Europe was... Close to 20%. It was, if you were a laborer, it wasn't a great time. Mm -hmm. You know, just coming out of the financial crisis, still concerns about what the decade would look like, mm -hmm. you know. 
But it was a great time to be buying some properties, <laughs> some income property, wasn't it? Oh, I should have bought back then. Yeah, shoulda, coulda, woulda. That's what we all <laughs> say. I say, you know, I, I remember the deals we had for our clients back then. And I'm thinking I should have just been greedy and bought them all for myself. I couldn't buy all of them. I didn't have the wherewithal to do that. But I could have bought a lot of them. You know, I was... Uh, quite financially sound during those times. Uh, one of my businesses wasn't doing so well, but, you know, the business is a separate entity from the person. And uh, yeah, it was uh, quite an opportunity. You know, if you had the guts and a lot of our clients did have the guts to do it, they bought lots of properties back then and made lots of money. And we're, we're glad to have helped them do that. But we didn't have enough clients do it back then. But, you know, we had some. And uh, boy, they're sitting pretty right Right now, they sure are. I mean, I wish I knew how many people we have enriched <laughs> from from all of our stuff because you know we don't follow them unless they sort of raise their hand and speak up. We don't know if they sold their properties, if they bought them in 2010 and sold them in 2012, for example. They would have reaped a little profit, but the big profits obviously would have come if they kept them. That would have been great. So 4.69%, Haiti earthquake, BP oil spill, the Gulf Coast was... Uh, Lots of environmental damage with that. We started withdrawing from Iraq. Uh, WikiLeaks, first time we really heard of them. And now we see Julian Assange, you know, in, in jail and uh, not doing well health uh, wise. And I hope he makes it because I think, listen, love him or hate him. I think he's a he, he was good for the world in a lot of ways in that uh, he really exposed a lot of things with WikiLeaks and uh and I think that was, you know, that was a real contribution. So, you know, look, some of you may say, well, that's ridiculous. You know, he gave away U.S. military secrets. I don't know. I don't really buy that. You, you know, you should see a movie called The Fifth Estate. The media is considered the fourth estate. And I think this movie is called The Fifth Estate. It's great about WikiLeaks. Really good. Came out several years ago. So good stuff. Okay, so you ranked that as number 10. What's number nine? What year is that? We're, we're skipping around here, by the way. Yeah, number nine was 2018. Mm -hmm. The mortgage rate was 4.54%. Yeah, um, really good. Last year, we saw Mugabe resign, world's oldest leader. We had the Winter Games. Equity markets collapsed at the end of the year. You know, we saw the royal wedding. That mm -hmm. was Kind of cool. I don't know if you're into that stuff. I'm not, but my mom <laughs> sure is. My mom and my aunt Joan, you both, you know, they're both big real estate investors. You've heard them on the show before, and they've talked about their self management strategies, and they love any royal wedding stuff. My mom yesterday was voxing me in a panic. She said, Jason, turn on the news. Look at Trump is in England. He's meeting with the queen. You can't believe the pageantry. It's incredible. I'm like, mom. I'm working, okay? <laughs> but she loves that stuff. And yeah, yeah. So the median home price back then, or not back then, but last year, 325. Yeah, so mortgage rates, I have this ranked. So number 10 is a higher mortgage rate than number nine. Mm -hmm. Number eight has a lower. So I have it ranked in terms of number one is the year with the lowest mortgage rate ever. Got it, got it, got it. So, you know, this is uh, not chronological, obviously. And so 325,000 was the median price and the mortgage rate was 4.54% in 2018. And your number eight ranking is uh, 2011, right? So we're kind of going back and forth here. Tell us about 2011. Well, Osama bin Laden was killed in 2011. We had that massive tsunami in Japan. Hard to believe it again, but Steve Jobs died eight years ago. Wow, yeah. You could buy a house for 225000 just $2,000 more in terms of the median price than it was the year before, right? Not much. And then number seven is this year. It's mm -hmm. the seventh best year for mortgage rates ever. 4.3% mm -hmm. so far. At the beginning of the year, I think most analysts were saying mortgage rates were headed to five, but that hasn't happened. It's gone the other way. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about that ad nauseum. We, you know, the Fed told us they would raise rates, but they didn't. So, uh, yeah, everybody had every reason to say rates were going up because that's what we were told. You know, that it's interesting. This Federal Reserve is so transparent. At least that's my impression compared to past Fed chairs. Jerome Powell really just, you know, he just tells you what he's going to do. 
you know, versus Greenspan, the complete opposite, right? He was like, everything was a secret and you'd have to decode his language. It's very different, don't you think? Oh, I like the decoding better. <laughs> it's it's so more it's interesting, right? Yeah, it's a game. It's a game. It's like hieroglyphics. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Okay, so so number seven is this year. This year is is the seventh best year in history, at least since we're looking back five decades, right? Yep. Uh, so you can buy a house. House price went down a little bit to three oh eight. Now remember, this is of course the nationwide median. Of course, we've seen the high end cyclical markets soften up, so that's why that price has come down. Uh, low end markets still booming, or at least booming pretty well. Not, maybe not as much as last year, but still very, very solid. And you rank 2014 as number six on your list. Yeah, 4.17% was the average 30 year mortgage rate. Uh, that is cheap. In that year. Yeah. Yeah. We saw the Ukraine unrest, uh, mm -hmm. the Malaysia Airlines MH370. I don't think that's been found. It's still lost. Wow. And that's been five years already. It doesn't seem like it's been that long. Yeah. And that's, oh, that's when the Nigerian school kids were kidnapped. The World Cup, Germany took the World Cup in soccer. Yeah, right? that was great. I yeah. wish I had been there for that. Yeah. And Ebola was a big deal in Africa. That's too bad, right? Yeah. The reason why I think about these events is, you know, events, lots of events happen, mm -hmm. you know, throughout time and mortgage rates sometimes respond and sometimes they don't. Right. But at least it, it helps remind everybody of the context. I mean, in 2014, that's when there was the big upset in Ferguson, the race riots over the uh, police uh, shooting and Robin Williams uh, passed away while well, he didn't pass away, he committed suicide, sadly. And uh, the Russian ruble went down the tubes, right? Yep. I'm glad I don't own the Russian ruble. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And and you could buy a, a house for $286,000, Two eighty six. So you can see in four years from 2010, it's 223 up to 286 in 2014. And uh, let's go to number five, Thomas. Number five, 2017. The rate was just below 4%, 3.99%. Wow. We saw the the Mueller investigation, you know, Trump takes office. Mm -hmm. Markets, rather than collapsing, they boomed. Yeah. You know, North Korea was still a problem. We saw the Me Too movement. And I was just listening to this yesterday, but you were there for the terrible experience in Las Vegas. Yep, I was there. I um Took a video of that terrible, tragic shooting, and um, I was uh, I was at the Mandalay Bay Hotel on the balcony. I heard what I thought was a jackhammer, and uh, I didn't realize for a few minutes that it was a gun. And I looked down at that concert that was going on, and um, I didn't know what was happening. You know, it was pretty far in the distance, and then it. You know, the stage lights turned on, which, by the way, they say probably cost quite a few lives. Had they left those lights off, you know, it would have been a tougher shot for the shooter. What a scary experience. I mean, that for those people on the ground, wow, that, that just was was awful. When I, I went downstairs, my friend and I decided we should leave. We were with Grant Cardone, actually, of all people. Uh, he was giving a presentation on his real estate fund. You know, we were there in a small group and then walked out to the foundation room and uh, looked over the balcony. And, and there was the shooting going on. But when we got down to the lobby in the elevator, we saw police running through the lobby. And, you know, Thomas, I'll never forget the look on one of those police officers' faces he looked scared, and I don't think they really knew what they were exactly running to, but they were running through the lobby, and they were heavily armed, not just the normal arms. Some of them had the arms they took out of the locker or, or whatever. I, I just never forget looking at seeing one of those police officers and looking at his face, and I, I don't know. That'll just be one of those things I'll, I'll always remember, I think. But uh, yeah, that was that was that was terrible. So what's our next year here? Um, OK, so 2013 you go to, right? Yep. One point lower, 3.98 percent was mm -hmm. the average mortgage rate for that year. We saw the IRS 
target conservative groups. Oh, Detroit. I re I remember those hearings. Yeah, <laughs> where all the conservative groups were getting targeted by Obama's IRS. How disgusting was that? Shame on Obama for that. That was bad. And they were trying to make it difficult for them to, you know, maintain their tax status. And I think they withheld tax ID numbers so they couldn't start and all kinds of bad, bad stuff. And, and oh, in Detroit, the poster child for uh, big uh, leftist government disaster files for bankruptcy that year, right? Yeah. I don't, well, I don't know. What do you say? About, I'm trying to think about. Yeah. I mean, there's a long story of why Detroit filed for bankruptcy, yeah, yeah, sure. whether they can avoid it in the future. And still, I'm, I'm not really convinced that they will yeah. you know, continue the same sort of mindset, but we'll see. We keep looking at that market and we keep turning it down. <laughs> um, a couple of our competitors are recommending that market, but we just... We just haven't quite gotten there. We'd love to have some more inventory of properties for our clients, but we will sell no wine before it's time, as the saying goes. And uh, I don't know. We're just not quite there yet. We are talking with another potential local market specialist in the greater Detroit area, not, you know, not some of the bad areas. And we might do something. There's a possibility with them, but we just haven't gotten there yet to recommend uh, the Detroit market. So... I don't know. Maybe it's our mistake. Maybe it's brilliant. Time will tell. You know, wait 10 years and, and then we'll know. George Zimmerman was acquitted. Uh, this 2013 was the federal government shutdown over mm. the debt ceiling. Yeah. It's been six years since the Supreme Court found for gay marriage. Um, that, that, was was, that was six years ago already? Wow. Mm -hmm. I cannot believe how quickly time is passing. That was the year of the Boston Marathon bombing and uh, the Snowden leaks. Wow. That boy, my perception of time is really skewed <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. We're talking about 2013, folks, by the way. And you could buy a new home for $266,000, right? Yep. Uh, number three is 2015, and mortgage rates then only 3.85%. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Really good. Yeah, so when I think of 2015, I think of, well, there was the Clinton emails issue, you know, mm -hmm. um, but what I really think about is the European debt problems and specifically the Greek debt crisis. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That thing's not going to go away. You can't fix that. <laughs> it's, it's just a problem. So many of the countries in Europe are on the verge of disaster. And China is riddled with their own set of problems. Uh, it's, uh, you know, people like to criticize the U.S., but I don't know. I think the U.S. has got a better than any major player in the world, uh, you know, if you, and I'm sort of categorizing Europe in, into one lump, which, you know, is right and wrong at the same time. But Greece, Portugal, Spain, Italy, yikes, those countries are yeah. not doing so well. So uh, number two, 2012 was the second best year mm -hmm. for interest rates at 3.66%. <laughs> Unbelievable. Wow. Facebook went public. Um, Obama beat Romney. You know, I was really hoping. <laughs> the Mayan Ryan calendar. <laughs> I was hoping yeah. that would happen. I was outside waiting. You wanted to, you wanted the world to end according okay, to the Mayan I really calendar? Didn't want the world yeah. Isn't there a part of you that watches Walking Dead and thinks, boy, that would be sure fun just to try out that world? Well, I don't watch Walking Dead. I think I've seen one episode in my life, never got into that one, but I get the idea. You know, we as humans, and look at folks, all of you listening, you're you're human too, so I know you have it. We have these morbid curiosities about us. It's a kind of sick, really, but uh, I get the idea, you know, and uh, having hosted, uh, well, I still host it, but the Holistic Survival Show that I started doing back in maybe 2009, maybe 2008 or nine during the Great Recession, having hosted that podcast and interviewing well over 200 survivalist type people, doom and gloomers, I really realized that that is, uh, I mean, look, I think it's good to be prepared, just rationally prepared, obviously, but the sort of survival culture, if you will, it goes to the point of a sickness at times. And so whether it's Y2K, the Mayan calendar, civil unrest, currency collapse, whatever's going to happen, right? We know 
things will happen as time goes on, of course. But number one, they're always wrong. Life goes on. And number two, some of these people, they spend so much time preparing for the world to end that they never really live in the first place. It, it, you know, your life should not be about preparing for the end. Your life should be about living. <laughs> and, 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 you know, yeah, have some extra food and water and, you know, maybe some weapons and some first aid kit, but don't go overboard, right? It's just, it's irrational to go overboard. So, yeah. So the world did not end with the Mayan calendar, <laughs> thankfully, and unless we are living in a fantasy here. And that's when they had the, uh, the London uh, Olympics, right? Yeah. I'm not actually sure who came out with top and gold medals yeah. that year. I don't remember. But uh, a new home, the most important thing, was $244,000. And the number one year, meaning the lowest interest rates. What year was that? Drum roll. Thomas. 2016. Mm, okay. Probably the biggest event of 2016. I think it jolted the world, right? Trump wins the presidency. Yeah, that was amazing. That was amazing. And compared to the alternative, I think it was good news. Not that I'm a huge Trumper, but <laughs> compared to the alternative, I think it was good. I think you agree, Thomas, but I'm not actually sure of your politics. Do tell. I don't really know either. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, I sometimes think I'm conservative, but then like I like Julian Assange mm -hmm. and I like yeah. I like sort of the transparency stuff, which doesn't really align with some things that conserve some certain part of the conservatives like. You yeah, know what right. I mean? yeah, I know what you mean. But I don't think it aligns with the, the liberals like either. I mean. Uh, I don't think Obama was a very transparent president at all. He campaigned that way, but he didn't act that way. It didn't happen in reality. I mean, he was, uh, I love when the CNN anchor, and oddly it was a CNN anchor, I can't remember the guy's name, but he went off on this rant and said, the Obama administration is a bunch of jackbooted thugs. You know, they hide things and play games and manipulate the system and all kinds of things. And uh, it's hard to argue with them. But yeah, I agree with you. I like Assange. And I think that's all true. So this was 2016. And you didn't mention the rates. They were only 3.65%. Wow, 3.65%. Tell us about Brazil and South Korea. Yeah, Brazil and South Korea booted their elected representatives. Mm. Their presidents were kicked out. You know, it's an odd event to the Syria issue became more... In, in Brazil, weren't there criminal charges against their uh, their leader? I can't remember. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And, and and the same with Italy, right? <laughs> not, not necessarily that year. I can't remember when it happened. But yeah, there's a lot of corruption around the world, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. We okay. saw Brexit in 2016. That, mm -hmm. that was... And we're still talking about yeah, it. Yeah, well, it hasn't, later. it hasn't really happened yet either. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens there. The TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, uh, that was a flop, right? Yeah, I'm not sure of very many officials that actually like that. I didn't like it. Yeah. And a new house would cost 305000 in 2016. 305, right? Now, listeners, here's the big thing to think about. Think about the interplay between prices and interest rates. Typically, you know, you remember, you're not buying a house on a price. You're buying it on a payment. Okay, that's what affects your cash flow as an investor. The important thing to understand is that approximately 1% in interest rate equals approximately 10% in price. So when you look at interest rate versus price, that shows your cost of ownership. Now, an interesting part of that, though, is it only shows your cost of ownership until you have a liquidity event. That shows your monthly cost of ownership, but it doesn't relate directly to your down payment or your final sales price because you have to put more money down if the property is more expensive. And even if interest rates are low, you might pay less per month, but again, it's that interest rate versus price ratio. And again, these are just 
overall prices nationwide. So they don't reflect the linear market versus the cyclical market. We've talked about that many times. And it also, of course, doesn't reflect the hybrid market accurately. So this is a broad, very broad brush. Thomas, does that make sense? Well, yeah, that's how I'd describe it. Yeah. Well, hey, thank you for sharing this with us today. It is fascinating to look back at things like this and uh, kind of see how things have played out. Uh, any closing thoughts? Oh, interest rates are still real low, although, right, they haven't gone to 5%, and it looks like they're headed more towards 4%. It's a great time. Yeah, it really is. It's it's quite desirable still. And remember, with income property, you can constantly renegotiate the deal along the way. So if interest rates decline in the future, then you can refinance and you can improve your interest rate picture. So uh, you're never... One of the beauties of, of real estate is you're never stuck with the deal you agree to the day you buy it. You always get to renegotiate the deal in various ways in terms of the interest rate, in terms of improvements, in terms of how you market the property, all kinds of things. So it's just such a fantastic asset class, a multidimensional asset class. So as the old saying goes, don't wait to buy real estate, buy real estate, and then wait until tomorrow, visit jasonhartman.com, click on the properties link, and uh, thank you, by the way, to all of you who have sent me your spam. Keep them coming. If you're getting <laughs> spam, you like that, Thomas? Yeah, that's funny. If you're getting spammed by a, a real estate company, a list that you did not subscribe to, send it over to us, forward it to us at reviews at jasonhartman.com. Reviews with an S, plural. Reviews at jasonhartman.com. Send us your spam. We would love to see it. So send it on over. And until tomorrow, happy investing. Thank you so much for listening. Please be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any episodes. Be sure to check out the show's specific website and our general website, hartmanmedia.com, for appropriate disclaimers and terms of service. Remember that guest opinions are their own. And if you require specific legal or tax advice or advice in any other specialized area, please consult an appropriate professional. And we also very much appreciate you reviewing the show. Please go Go to iTunes or Stitcher Radio or whatever platform you're using and write a review for the show. We would very much appreciate that. And be sure to make it official and subscribe so you do not miss any episodes. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Music.